USS Gudgeon has been lurking in the waters of Area 7 for several days now. Enemy aircraft have been everywhere, and they are forcing Gudgeon to spend a good amount of time submerged. Thus far, we have not encountered any enemy shipping besides the old paddle ship we plugged two fish into a couple of days ago. I have a feeling our luck will soon change, however. Finally, some good luck. Our hydrophone operator, Petty Officer 2nd Class Coil, has picked up a lone merchant contact heading north. I made the decision to risk it, and we are going to attempt to chase it down on the surface. Hopefully, no aircraft will show up and ruin our hunt. Radar contact with the enemy merchant ship has been established. Plot shows the contact is moving north on a heading of 350 degrees. Range to target is 14 miles. Gudgeon is rapidly closing in on the contact with her 20 knot surface speed. At 1605, all hands reported to battle stations. All hands man your battle stations. All hands man your battle stations. Sixteen fifteen. Radar is now reporting a second surface contact to the north. It does not seem to be operating with the merchant contact we have been pursuing. Thankfully, it seems to be heading away. Radar is now reporting three surface contacts. No visual on anything as of yet. Gudgeon is still nine nautical miles away from the primary target. We now have visual on the merchant ship we have been tracking for quite a while now. Uh, they are reporting it bearing at 296 degrees at 41,000 some feet away. And there she is. We can just see the mast out there. That is indeed a merchant ship. It looks like the funnel is in the rear. It looks like it may very well be a tanker. So definitely a worthy target. I was intending on utilizing our deck gun for this attack, however, uh, there are quite a few other ships in the area, and I am not sure whether they are warships or other freighters. If we go to our map here, we can see. So this is the one we are currently tracking and that we have visual contact on. She is heading north. We also have this ship here, which is heading northeast. We recently picked this up. This is the newest contact. Um, it is heading northeast at a slow speed, and it is pretty close to the freighter, so if it is a warship, uh, a deck gun attack is definitely a no-go, considering it's only 6,000-ish yards away from the freighter. And then we also have this contact to the north. It is also heading northeast. This was the second contact we picked up on radar. Uh, so who knows what all of these are. I'm sure we'll have visual on the second contact's mast here soon. We'll be able to determine if it's a merchant ship, I may just use the deck gun and take them both out. However, if it's a warship, obviously that is a horrible idea. The seas are also extremely smooth, as you can see, it is like glass. So we're going to have to keep our distance and make the a good chunk of the approach submerged if we are going to conduct a torpedo attack. So, that is the current situation. We're making 20 knots right now. I will keep you all updated as USS Gudgeon tries to get around this contact and also gain visual on the other close radar contact. I now have visual on the mysterious radar contact, and that is no merchant ship. That is a destroyer by the looks of things, single stacker, uh, and it is cutting northeast. 
Um, so I'm thinking of the best way to go about this. I suppose I could submerge and let it run on by. We could torpedo it. This contact is still moving north according to our radar operator. I, I mean, if this, uh, if this warship is heading northeast, it does make itself a, you know, a tempting target. It's a pretty easy intercept for us. Um, yeah, this will be interesting. The problem is, of course, this guy is going to come racing over here if we torpedo it. Chances are we will have to submerge pretty soon just to evade this uh, warship before surfacing again and con continuing our chase of this big freighter here because that is the primary target. Uh, also, torpedoing, I don't know, firing at a warship in th these you know, lighting conditions and in these sea conditions, uh, they're going to spot that wake, you know, a mile away. So that is something else to take into consideration. I feel like a shot against the warship, unless we are very close, would be pretty foolish. Anyway, I'll assess the situation. We'll see if this guy changes course. If not, I suspect Gudgeon will have to submerge in, you know, 10 or so minutes. The decision was made to submerge the boat. Looking at the plot, it seems possible that Gudgeon will be able to intercept the freighter submerged. If the warship continues on her current course, they will pass awfully close to us. Hopefully we remain undetected. We are getting pretty darn close to the enemy destroyer here. We're just gonna pop up our scope and take a look. There she is. It's actually a two stacker. I misidentified it originally. And that thing is awfully close to us. And there is the freighter we're hoping to torpedo. Unfortunately, that warship is way too darn close for comfort. Let's go ahead and rig for silent running. We're currently just making one knot. Let's also drop the boat down to 90 feet just to be safe here. The enemy warship seems to be continuing on her course. She's not zigzagging or anything. I will say it seems like the merchant ship has uh, deviated from its course a little bit here. It seems like it's heading more northward. It was on a heading of... Oh, actually... Maybe not. It seems to be... No, it is continuing its course of uh, 350 there. That is my mistake. Anyway, we'll see. This uh, warship is pretty darn close. A little too close for comfort here. Let's see if it's speeding up or slowing down. That's the merchant. Okay, warship steady. We'll see. Hopefully it just passes behind us. And keeps on chugging along. The enemy warship continued on our course and passed just aft of Gudgeon. Thankfully, we were not detected. Now we will utilize the Gar's high underwater speed to get into a suitable attack position. We are now in a pretty good position to begin gathering information on the merchant ship. Luckily, we were able to pass by the enemy warship. There she is, lock on target. Let's identify real quickly. I believe we have encountered this multiple times in the past. It is pretty much right at a 90 degree AOB right now. Let's see here. San Maru, um... Yeah, I think this is her. 4,800 tons. Okay, plug that in. We are going to do the old-fashioned attack method here. 
Mark range 1,600 yards. Turn on the position keeper. I established the speed was five knots using the three minute method. Mark set that in. Angle on bow. Um, okay, just over 90. We'll do 90 like two. Mark. There we go. Target's closing. Looking good. Looking good. I think we are going to fire. We are nice and close. Tube one will run at a depth of five meters. Contact pistol. Tube two will do the same. Contact pistol. Tube one open. Tube two open. This is going to be a very fast attack. Our torpedoes are going to have to whip around here. Let's, ad let's adjust course. This isn't... No course. Two, seven. Let's wait till our course change here. And we should be should be okay. Up scope. Alright. Rudder midships. All right, tube one, fire. Wait a little bit. Right offset angle, one degree for tube two. Tube two, fire. All right, tube two's away, down scope. Well, there we have it. Two torpedoes, one torpedo impact, one dud. And that is why I fire two torpedoes, even if the ship is small enough to go down with one hit, because you never know. Now that we have two <laughs> warships in the immediate area, we are going to think about escaping. And I think to do that, we'll just head west, I suppose. I've uh, maybe southwest to kind of get away from the shallows here. That's probably our best bet. We will get away at... Uh, let's start moving standard speed to get out of here a little quicker and drop down to 90 feet. Uh, hopefully we will be able to get away from the immediate area and uh, we will remain undetected. We have certainly stirred up a hornet's nest. Three destroyers are now circling the wreckage of the freighter Gudgeon torpedoed. Thankfully, we have remained undetected and are continuing westward, away from the scene of the crime.
The sun is now set, and Gudgeon has lost contact with all three destroyers. I did a quick sweep with the night scope to ensure nothing was lurking nearby. After six hours submerged, the order was given to surface the boat. Well, folks, that is going to do it for today's episode. I do hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and comment, as it really does help out the channel. But until next time, this is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I'll see you all on the next one.